Hey friends, Adobe just released version two of their Firefly image model, and I wanna guide you through some of the amazing results that I've been able to get out of it and walk you through my process. So you can access Firefly by going to firefly.adobe.com. You'll get these different modules. We're gonna focus on text to image. So let's just click on that and we get some examples here of some results that can be great inspiration and starting points for you to dive in from. Let's go ahead and pick this one. Um, you can see here we actually have a bunch of UI on the right. So this is our controls panel and we have our prompt input at the bottom. We're going to start fresh here and click clear styles just so we're not having anything impact this. And I'm going to type in a prompt. So let's type something like macro photo of an iridescent microscopic creature. And let's see what we get. So on the right here, you can see we're using Firefly image two. You can alternate between that and the old image one model. We also have aspect ratio, which is square currently. And then we have our content types. This is set to auto. Right now it's choosing a photo content type. You can also select art to get more illustrative or digital art kinds of results. This slider here, I actually think is the most important thing. So this is our visual intensity. And you can think of this as if you played with other image generation models like mid journey that are very stylized and have a very specific kind of visual output, taking this all the way to the right creates a more beautiful, more mid journey esque, more like stylized version. Whereas taking it to the left creates a more, let's say analog or more um, amateur kind of output. So something you would expect more so from a typical uh, photography. So these are the kinds of results we got right out of the gate with visual intensity at the middle. I think some of these are actually pretty cool as they are. Let's go ahead and play with this slider and see what we get. So let's see what happens if we bring this all the way down. So you can see this is the kind of results you would expect out of a microscope, right? So we're bringing the visual intensity, it's being less opinionated about the kinds of results that we're getting. Now let's move it all the way to the extreme right. So now you can see it's really focused on making beautiful content, right? Beautiful imagery out of this. And it's much more opinionated about the kinds of styles that we get. We have a bunch of other controls here. Effects are cool. These are if you have a very specific style that you're going for. I tend to not use them as much. I focus more on the prompt itself to get results that I want. So we're gonna close that for now. We also have photo settings. So these are specific to different kinds of images. So let's say we want to focus on photo, but we want a more traditional photo. A woman standing in a raincoat in front of a mountain range. So we have a woman standing in a raincoat in front of a mountain range. We have visual intensity all the way to the extreme right. And it's gone on auto, it's kind of detected that this is a photo. So we let's turn auto off. We want to make sure it stays on photo despite the prompt. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with some of these uh, photo settings. But what I wanna do is see what it looks like with our visual intensity way down for this prompt. So now we get more traditional photographs, right? Ones you would probably take with your camera. And if we go down to photo settings, auto is off. And you can see, if you're familiar with photography, these are kinds of settings you would typically have with your camera where you can adjust the field of view, um, the aperture and the shutter speed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the aperture way up and we're gonna adjust the field view quite a bit as well and click generate. Cool, so you see how that really impacted the results so that we're getting this nice background blur. Bump up the visual intensity again to get a different style. So you can see here we do have that background blur and has her a bit more in focus. Visual intensity is something you're gonna to wanna to play around with some. It will be very opinionated if you turn it all the way to the right and you may get more digital art kind of results than you would photograph, even on the photography setting. Those are just some other cool settings that you can play around with to kind of tweak and manipulate your results and the output that you're getting. Now I have another prompt that I've kind of pre-made that I'm gonna put in here. We're gonna set photo settings to auto, we'll close this, and we're going to bring our visual intensity down quite a bit to about there. And let's change our aspect ratio to landscape and click generate. So this is a rather elaborate prompt that I put in here. Uh, and you can see we get some interesting results, kind of a sci-fi looking result here. But another feature I wanna point out is reference image gallery. So you can actually upload your own images 
as a reference image and it'll stylize your output based on that. So let's go through and check out some of the reference images. And there's a specific one I'm interested in using for this. So let's go down and try this one. Cool, so you can see how it really took the style of this image down here. So if we kind of zoom in on this, you can see it's using this image to impact the style of our results. So you can combine your text prompt and the language that you use with actual imagery to generate this kind of output. So now I wanna walk you through my process of creating really elaborate prompts for Firefly. So I actually use ChatGPT and what I do is I take an image that I've found that I want to use as sort of a starting point for exploring. And we're, we're gonna use this image here. We're gonna drag it into ChatGPT and we're gonna ask it to describe this image content and style as a prompt for a text to image generator, no bullets. So it gave us a prompt here, and this is a rather elaborate prompt. I probably wouldn't have written this on my own, and we're just gonna copy this and bring it into Firefly. Awesome, so this looks really cool. Again, we can play around with the visual intensity here to see what different results we get, nice. And you can obviously go in too and play with the prompt. So let's make this a bit more subtle. See if we can get the subtle pastel colors here. Awesome. So this is starting to look a lot like the original image that we had. And you can even go in and change the subject matter. So let's say we don't want it to be sunglasses. Maybe it's shoes. Nice. Now maybe I want it to be more specifically a pair of sneakers. So this is just kind of a fun way to use other imagery, things you find, inspiration you get elsewhere, and bring it into a large language model like ChatGPT, get text out of it, and use that text as sort of a starting point and template for playing around in Firefly and getting really elaborate, beautiful images out of it. So here are some examples of images I've generated using exactly this technique. So this is an amazing digital illustration of a girl sitting at a cafe. I really love how this chocolate dessert illustration came out. I think it looks really amazing. And here's some isometric 3D art that I thought came out really cool. You can also use it with photography. So I really like this photo of mountains with the yak in front of it. I think it came out cool. And you could even have a conversation with the LLM. So ask ChatGPT to convert it to a whole different style. I thought this illustration came out kind of fun too. I hope you found this helpful. If you enjoy this kind of content, be sure to let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe. Thanks.